Now it's time for uh, some more stories about this fu funky city, Amsterdam, by Eva Gladek. I understand you are American? Yes. And you like the city very much, and she is uh, the CEO and founder of Metabolic. Yes. Welcome to EcoSummit. Thank you. I think my microphone is off. Now it should be on. Is it on now? No, it's not. Is it on? Number three, right? Number three? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Hello? Hello? No. Yeah. Okay. Now it's working. Great. Um, yes, I am the founder and CEO of Metabolic. Um, and what I'm going to tell you guys about today is indeed a story of some of our work in Amsterdam. Uh, I guess more as a, as a break from all of this heavy business talk and to give you some entertainment. Um, so the title of my talk is Cities, uh, a Leverage Point in Transitioning to a Circular Economy. Where does this work? Where do I click? <laughs> okay. Uh, I have a lot of slides, so I might click through them quickly. It's mostly photos. And first, I'm going to tell you briefly about my company, uh, some intro into why I started this, so global challenges that we're addressing, um, the circular economy as a solution. It's a really big thing in the Netherlands. Uh, the Netherlands is a circular hotspot. Um, cities as an intervention point, and then some examples from our work here. So Metabolic is what we call a systems consulting and clean technology development firm. We have a very uh, mission-focused um, organization. We're trying to transition the economy to a sustainable state. And we're organized kind of as a pipeline. So we have three divisions, consulting, technologies, and ventures. In the consulting division, we do systems analysis for governments, for large corporates, for sectors. Um, and this is some of the work that we did for a uh, fashion company, CNA, visualizing all of their material streams and coming up with a strategy for how they could be more circular. Altogether, in the last four years, we've done around 130 consulting projects for most of the leading corporates in the Netherlands and abroad as well. Um, once we identify places in the system to intervene, so places where we think we can make a meaningful change, we do our own project development and R&D through our technologies division. So um, I'm going to talk more about this, but in Amsterdam North, we built one of the first demonstration grounds for circular urban development, so closing water, nutrient, and energy cycles in a local area. And finally, when we find something that's really uh, scalable or successful, we put it into its own company. So we, we are creating an ecosystem of companies through our ventures arm. And one of our first commercial spin-offs is Spectral Utilities, um, a company that's focused on transitioning the energy market through um, plug-and-play smart grid systems, but also, for example, something called the Solar Transformer, which is a portable energy system. <clears throat> So when I started um, the company, I, well, I was inspired by uh, my own concerns about the environment. I originally was a biologist, and I grew a lot of bacteria, and I saw these exponential curves where they would grow very, very slowly, then shoot up and suddenly die. And then uh, when I was in college, I saw all of these graphs, which show all these different parameters of human health and well-being, um, all also growing in this exponential way, roughly starting around 1950. And um, of course... When you dig into that, you see that there's all sorts of drivers behind it, all sorts of global issues. Um, hunger, poaching, mining, uh, rise in electricity use. That's Black Friday down there in the bottom right, you know, crazy rampant consumerism in the United States. Um, all of these are, are drivers that are pushing us in, into these exponential curves. In nature, you know that exponential curves always crash. You just don't know exactly when, when you're on one. And so I started getting curious, okay, what are the boundaries? What, what is the safe zone for us to actually uh, deal with this exponential growth pattern? And that's when um, a very useful study from the Stockholm Resilience Center on planetary boundaries came out, showing that actually we've crossed a lot of key boundaries, uh, like biospheric integrity and biogeochemical flows. So that's the stuff in the red. And we're crossing many more. So we're actually on this unsafe tipping point. Um, so how do we actually deal with all these issues? One of the um, great sort of models that has emerged for conceptualizing how to solve these problems is the linear versus circular economy storyline. So what it, the, the way the story goes is that we currently have a linear economy. We take natural resources, process them, and then dispose of them. And in fact, what we need is a circular economy where we're cycling all those resources um, and ideally keeping the cycles as small as possible. So rather than going directly to recycling, doing refurbishment first because you're preserving all of the energy that you put into making a product. Um, so this is kind of the circular economy model. Um, 
And the big thing, the reason why people have gotten excited about this is that, of course, every time you pre prevent something from getting thrown away, you're saving a huge amount of value. Um, McKinsey estimated that we can save between 520 to 630 billion euros a year, well, dollars a year, um, in an advanced circular economy scenario. I'm going to skip this one. Um, so with Metabolic, we did an assessment of exactly how non-circular the economy is right now. This is a picture of all the global material flows in the world for the year 2010. It took a lot of research, like 300 different data sources. And you can see over there, I don't think I have a pointer, but the, one of the green lines at the very end right there is what's recycled. And this is scaled. So you can see compared to the 330,000 Empire State Buildings of what we extract every year, it's a very tiny amount that we recover. So this is how linear the economy is. So we did an assessment of where do we need to intervene to make the economy circular most effectively. And we came up with um, a lot of different key points. Uh, two of the top ones are agriculture and cities. And that's why we focus a lot on, on these two areas for innovation. But there's, of course, mobility, electronics, chemicals, C&D. Cities are a great intervention point because they only occupy around 3% of the land surface, so a very small area, but they're responsible for a lot of the impacts. So they consume 75% of the resources, they produce uh, 60 to 80% of the greenhouse gases. So if you can just redesign that 3%, you can really transform the way the world functions and hopefully get us off these dangerous exponential curves. Um, so for the last four years, we've really been specializing on how to take cities and transform them into a more circular state. So this shows our work for the province of Friesland in the Netherlands, all of their linear material flows, and then all the circular potential using existing technologies for how they can actually make a profit and close these resource cycles um, today. Um, I'm going to skip these three things. So um, in, the, in Amsterdam in particular, uh, we applied this, uh, this whole model of going towards circularity in a project called De Keuvel. Um, this was a community-driven, top-down plus bottom-up project, very kind of unique, um, where we transformed a plot of land in Amsterdam North into a circular neighborhood uh, as a demonstration ground. So this is Amsterdam. You guys are probably familiar with it. There's Central Station at the bottom. And around one kilometer up uh, on that plot of land is the site where De Keuvel is located. It, is, uh, it was a shipyard, so it was an empty plot of land for many years. It got polluted in the course of being used as a shipyard. Um, and the city owned it. So they put out a call uh, to local entrepreneurs saying, does anyone have a great idea to do something awesome and sustainable with this piece of land for the next 10 years? Um, we worked with a group of architects and came up with this uh, quite unique concept to use houseboats, so um, buildings that are floating in Amsterdam that would normally be thrown away because when they're old, people dump them because the plot of water is actually much more valuable, um, to put them on the land, eco-retrofit them, and create this a temporary office park. Uh, so this was the concept. You have this polluted plot of land. You take these houseboats. Uh, upgrade them to uh, a very sustainable level of performance and put them, uh, well, have them there for 10 years. The other part of the plan was to use plants to phytoremediate the soil, so actually to clean the soil of pollutants. Um, and this is a picture of how we envisioned the site looking, of course, when we were getting started. So Metabolic did a whole analysis of the whole system around this, and we really tried to think of how could we make this really a circular showcase. So close all the nutrient cycles, produce all our own energy, do monitoring uh, with sensors, et cetera, like really put all, all the bells and whistles on it. And we came up with this uh, theoretical plan for how you could do this. We designed and developed all our own technologies. So this is with a community uh, of renters. We were building our water filtration systems. Um, this is actually the retrofitting of the buildings, so a lot of different work went into retrofitting these houseboats. Um, I'm just going to flip through. So you can see that's the first boat that we got up there. We paid one euro for it. And um, down here, looking like Noah's Ark, it's after the transformation. This was the pilot boat where we learned a lot on how to retrofit these buildings properly. We also did a lot of our own development of sensor systems um, to, because we, we really believed in making sure that we were monitoring resource flows like water, air quality, energy use, etc. Um, and we designed our own uh, sort of uh, interface for telling users um, on the site, giving them feedback on, on their own energy use. So this was a really important day. This is a really crappy screenshot. Sorry, it's from YouTube. But this was when we finally got to crane the boats onto the land after um, six months or seven months of working off 
uh, off ground, and uh, it, it worked. We didn't know that it was going to be successful. Um, and now, uh, if you go to Decauville today on an average summer day, this is what it looks like. It's become uh, a very sort of central location in Amsterdam. We used it as a, as a sort of, uh, what we called it was a clean tech playground. So a place to experiment around clean technologies and different types of resource flows. Um, and actually, at this event that's pictured here uh, on water innovation in the city, um, what happened is that we were able to get the opportunity to scale this Decoval project, which normally seems like something impossible to scale because it's so random and unique, to the broader area around it. So um, Decoval is actually located in Bauxloterham, which is this um, part of the city uh, pictured up there that um, was very industrial. Um, and so we actually were able to take the principles of the Koval and come up with an entire strategy for all of Bauxloterham um, for, for the city to adopt. So we based it on uh, circular, bio-based, and smart principles that we had been able to test on a small scale at the Koval. And then we brought together a lot of different companies and parties um, to sign their support for the, for the bigger uh, smart city, circular city program that we developed. And of course, the overall ambition that we have is to come up with repli replicable systems and modules uh, for cities um, and for the companies working uh, in close quarters within cities, like in industrial parks, et cetera, for actually closing these cycles. And so we were able, through a lot of our work um, advising parties like the uh, waste incineration company in Amsterdam or different corporates like Philips, um, we're actually piecing together the bigger picture of how you can actually realistically and feasibly close these new, uh, different resource cycles and genuinely move to a new uh, circular economy, not just in the Netherlands, but hopefully uh, globally. So um, this is uh, our process of learning over the last four years. I hope uh, at least this is a little bit of an entertaining uh, reprieve from all this intense investment talk. So, <laughs> thank you, guys. Super. Thank you very much, Eva. Thank you. Um, I actually have been in the Kerville a couple yes. of weeks ago during my last trip, and I think it's a good location for our next Eco Summit sponsored in Amsterdam. Do you agree? <laughs> they only serve vegetarian food. That's part of the deal. Also true. But they make most of it locally. Yeah, right? actually, there's. Um, we actually sponsored. Uh, the setup of a mushroom farm really close by to De Govel, which supplies most of the mushrooms. Some really interesting things going on with the food there. And we have a greenhouse where we grow food for the cafe using uh, nutrients recycled from the urine produced in the, in the, on the site. So really cool circular stories if you want to explore them. It's, it's not as gross as it sounds. It's completely sterile and clean. <laughs> so, anyway. Cool. Yeah. We love it. Thank you very much, Eva. Special round of applause.